your comfortable seat. Today is Giving Tuesday. You may have noticed your login was Be Well Day. And um, I'm very grateful that Candace, as a studio owner, does those kind things of allowing people to self-promote. And then she promotes for us, too. And, you know, she already is very generous by donating her space at Black Sheep two times a week for Be Well students to take classes in normal situations. Obviously, that's not happening right now. And actually, with my population, it will probably be a really long time. I'm going to meet you guys. I forgot to. So as you know, my nonprofit, Be Well, is um, a nonprofit that provides basically free yoga classes for those that are going through any sort of treatment for cancer. They could even be finished for five years but still feel that need to learn how to calm their minds and, you know, learn the ways that the many benefits of yoga. We all know that there's many benefits more than just um, flexibility. So what we had to do is go on Zoom with our classes, which has actually worked out really well because our students can now spread the word and people can take our classes all over. They don't have to be in our um, region. So when we have classes live, we have a donation jar and most students, if they can, will put in five to $10. So today for Giving Tuesday, if you have an extra few bucks in your bank account and could, you know, spare a latte or a latte, a latte, um, it would be awesome if you could put even five or ten dollars towards our Giving Tuesday campaign. We are fortunate enough that um, five of our retreat sponsors, because of course our retreat was canceled, have said that they will match our funds up to five thousand dollars. So if we can raise five thousand dollars, it's going to turn into ten thousand dollars which is a huge amount of money in my little UL world. As I mentioned, the retreat was canceled. That was one of our big fundraisers for the year. And it's also very likely that our gala will have to be canceled as well. And that is our biggest fundraiser of the year. So if you have it in your heart to give a little, you can go on to BUL's um, Facebook page and there's a campaign going that you can do donate to. If you have Venmo, our Venmo is B-Well-2. You can do it that way, or you can go to our website, bewelltherapy.net, and there's a donate page there too. But enough of my self-promotion. Let's go ahead and close our eyes, find that comfortable seat, and start to breathe those long, peaceful breaths in and out. Allowing the breath to soften your shoulders and your jaw. Allowing it to relax your belly muscles. And then taking a moment to set your intention for your practice today. You get to choose what that might be for you today. I read this quote that said, the richest people in the world are those who give more than they take. Giving fills your life with the things money can't buy. Take about three more of those really nice breaths in and out. And then allow your eyes to float open. We're going to start on your back today. If you do not have a block and you have a Lysol, bog, um, Lysol white bottle or Clorox white bottles, grab that because I'm going to help you to release your neck if your neck is feeling like mine has been feeling the last few days. You know, I also teach something called melt, and this is actually kind of a melt move. So come on to your back. I need to bring my feet into Vatikanasana, the soles of the feet together, and then take either your Clorox wipes bottle or your block and bring it just above the occipicus, right at the crest of your um, skull. So your um, neck is no part touching the roller. And then lower your chin to your chest and let that block kind of pull the um, bones away from your um, 
skull, so your cervical vertebrae. And then draw your shoulders down and away from the ears and try to drop them to the mat. You can turn your palms up. And I want you to really think about touching your chin to your chest or coming as close as you can. What we're doing is we're creating space between the vertebra, opening, helping to decompress your neck. Our necks get really compressed, especially right now with all the amount of work we're doing on the computers. So taking some time to let that go. I've been doing this every evening with my roller underneath me, but it works just as good with wipes or a block. Notice if you're holding any tension anywhere. <clears throat> Maybe your shoulders are where you carry your stress, so let them relax. And then come back to that intention you brought to your class today. Take about five more inhales and exhales. And then go ahead and close your knees, pull that block out from underneath you. Set your head back onto the floor and turn your head from side to side and feel if it feels a little softer. You got maybe a little more space in there. For me, it feels much better. And then extend your legs out in front of you and your arms up above you and walk your feet over to the right and take your hands to the right, coming into Banana Asana. You can use that right hand to grab the left wrist and pull it a little deeper into the pose. And you can cross that left leg over the right if you like. Just trying to feel that nice stretch on your side body. Take another five breaths here. And then we'll move it to the other side. So unwind your feet, send them over to the side of the mat. Arms are gonna reach over there too. Grab that right wrist with the left hand and cross your right ankle over your left foot. Uncross your feet, let go of your hands. Turn over onto one side or the other and work your way into your tabletop position. You can add a blanket under your knees if that would feel good to you today. And if you have blocks, have them at the top of the mat. You can also use those Clorox wipes if you have two of them. Start to move yourself through some cat cows, inhaling, arching the spine, exhaling, drawing the belly in, dropping the chin to the chest. Ah, letting the breath be your guide. And then taking that into Chakra Vakasana flow, if you'd like, toes together, knees wide, set your hips back. Inhale, draw your chest through, squeeze your elbows in, find that cow pose, and then round it back into cat and set back into extended child's pose. Inhaling on the way up. Exhale as you set those hips back. Do a few more of this, of this little flow here helping to warm up the joints of your body. Let's take one more round. And then move into extended child's pose with your forehead resting on the mat. Take your hands behind you, interlace your fingers, press your palms together, and then lift them away from your spine. Rock across your forehead from left to right, taking your hands with you.
And then go ahead and release. You're gonna press right back into tabletop position. Start by extending your right foot out behind you. Toes are facing the earth and then bend that knee and press your foot to the ceiling for five, four, three, two, one more, and then take your knee out to the side like you're a dog at the fire hydrant. <laughs> so lift that knee up for five, four, three, two, one. Extend your foot out and plant it on the floor. So it's coming right out from your hip and then lift your left arm up and look to the ceiling. And as you exhale, turn it into your thread the needle. You can take your top arm above your head. I like to walk it over to the left side of the mat or you can wrap it around your back. Couple more breaths here. And then slide that right hand next to your face. Press yourself up, leave your leg extended. We're gonna come into awkward dog. So run, tuck the, or flatten that. <laughs> Let's see, straighten your left leg, that works. And send your hips to the right. And then re-bend your left knee, bring it back to the mat and swing your right foot to the left side, taking that nice body stretch. And then go ahead and set your right knee next to your left and we'll take that to the other side. So extend your left foot out, toe faces the earth and then bend your knee and press it to the ceiling for five, four, Three, two, one. Knee comes out to the side, lift it up for five, four, three, two. Last one, leg extends out. Coming into your thread the needle, right arm reaches up and you look up and then come onto that right shoulder. Do the same thing with your arm that you did on the first side. So either reaching towards the corner of your mat or wrapping it around your back. Couple more breaths. And then move that hand next to your face. Bring yourself up, keep your leg extended. Tuck your back toes, straighten the knee, hips are moving to the left. Rebend your right knee, lower it to the floor, send your left foot to the right side of the mat and look over at it. And then go ahead and bring that knee to meet your right knee, coming back into your tabletop position. And then I want you to step your right foot forward and lift up the back toes of your left foot. If you have blocks, you can bring them underneath your hands, but I'm gonna to prove to you that this pose can be done without the blocks. If you have a blanket underneath you, go ahead and move that out of the way. So I'm gonna take the blocks out because we're gonna to try to do a little jump switch. And I know it's much easier without blocks, but for those of you that don't have it, it is a possibility. So get a little bouncy in that left foot and then jump switch. I'm kind of on my fingertips because I have short arms. Let's see, let's get a little sinky now on that right side, bouncing up and down and then jump switch. And then go ahead and walk your back foot in a little closer, coming into pyramid pose. Inhale to lengthen, exhale, lower down. Bring your head a little bit from left to right. Shake it, yes. And then let it be. We're gonna step the left foot forward and the right foot back coming into pyramid on the second side. Draw that long spine on your inhale, drop your nose to the knee on the exhale. And then go ahead and step your right foot up to meet your left. Inhale, flat back. 
exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair pose. Find your chair pose and hold there. Let your shoulders drop down. Try to lengthen that tailbone towards the floor. Take three more breaths. And then rise to standing. Let your palms touch and bring them to your heart. Little half sun with some modifications. Here we go. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, cactus your arms. Squeeze your shoulder blades. Look up. Inhale, palms touch. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, plant your right hand, bend your right knee, and lift your left arm up to the sky, taking a twist. And then lower the left hand down, bend the left knee, and lift your right arm up. Good. Both hands back to the mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair pose. Holding for three breaths. And then rise back up. Touch your palms. Bring them back to your heart. Let's try that again. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, cactus. Reach back to the sky and then bow it down. Lengthen. Right hand to the floor, left hand to the sky, look up. Switching to the other side, bend that left knee, lift your right hand up. Come back into your flat back, take a breath in. Exhale, fold, inhale, Utkatasana. Coming back in the chair. Holding there for a couple more breaths. And then with your next inhale breath, rise up, bringing your right foot into marching. Hold there. And then cross your right leg over your left so you're coming into eagle legs. I have my toes on the floor. We'll take left arm over right for eagle arms. Drop your shoulders down, lift your elbows up, inhale. And then exhale, round yourself into that little ball. Really feel that low back, you need some space. So you're decompressing that area as well. Two more breaths here. And then go ahead and unwind your hands, bring them to the floor of the blocks and send your foot up into the sky in the standing split. Right foot lifts. Take an inhale breath and as you exhale, Shiva squats for four. That's one, rise back up. Both knees bend, the right foot touches the floor. That's two. Last one is next. And then as you come down, rather than tapping the floor, bring your foot next to your left foot, come back in the chair, hold there. And then inhale, rise into marching. Try to create space by dropping those shoulders away from your ears. Crossing left leg over right, coming back into your eagle, toe can be on the floor, right arm over left. Shoulders down, elbows up. Take a breath in and then exhale round and curl into that little ball. They say it's the eagle back in the nest. Release your hands to the floor, unwind your legs, send your left foot to the sky, standing splits. Take an inhale breath and as you exhale, tap your foot. That's one, we got four more or three more, two, Three. As you come down this time, bring your left foot next to your right. Find your way back to chair. Hold there. And then drop your hands down. Inhale, flat back. Either step or hop back, top of a push up. Lower yourself all the way down to the ground. With your hands lifted off the floor, inhale, cobra. Exhale, lower down, do that one more time with no hands, inhale, lift. Exhale down, this time we'll rise with our hands pressing into the floor. Holding there and looking over each shoulder, look over your right, and then take it over to the left. Come back to center, tuck your toes, downward facing dog. 
Ah, feeling that nice stretch in the backs of your thighs. Maybe taking a breath in through the nose and allowing it to exhale out your mouth. And then we're gonna lift that right leg up, bend your knee and stack your hip, take your foot in an ankle rotation. Move it the opposite way. And then move your knee in a circle and go both ways. Re-extend it back behind you. As you exhale, bring your foot forward. Inhale, rise up into crescent lunge. <sighs> Take a few breaths there. And then bring your left foot into marching. Hold there for a breath. Extend your foot in front of you and then swing it through for Virabhadrasana three. I'm gonna step back a little bit. And then drop your hands to the ground. You're coming back into standing splits, but I want you to walk your hands a little bit further forward. Soften that right knee, we're gonna jump switch. So you should now have right foot behind you, left on the floor. Walk your hands back, engage your core. We're rising back into warrior three and then stepping back to high lunge. Here we go. Inhale brings you up. Exhale takes you back. Drop your hands to the floor. Take a flow if you like or choose to skip it. Your choice, you can always add those extra push-ups in or whatever you need. Find your way back into dog and breathe those beautiful breaths in and out, reminding yourself of your positive affirmation. Maybe it's I am generous. How about that? I like that one. <laughs> and then extend your foot behind you, bend your knee, stack your hip. It's your left side now. A few of those ankle rotations in both directions. And then two hip circles going both ways. And then send that foot back behind you. Take an inhale breath. As you exhale, left foot steps forward, rise into your crescent lunge. Press that back heel down, stretch your calf muscle. And then begin to slide that left foot or that right foot into marching, coming back into marching. Holding there, finding some balance. Extend your right foot out in front of you and then swing it back. We're back in Vera three. And then drop your hands to the ground. Make your hips nice and even. Walk them forward, hands forward, about a handprint. Soft bend in that left leg as you send it into the sky and land on your right. Hands walk back, you're back in standing splits. Belly gets strong, right knee is soft, rise into warrior three. And then step back to high lunge. Hands to the mat, take a flow, a pause or a rest. We're gonna meet in extended childs for a few breaths. The richest people in the world are those that give more than they take. Giving fills your life with the things money cannot buy. <sighs> Take those patient breaths, tuning back into your body, feeling the nice warmth you've created. Last three breaths there if you're rejoining us. And then go ahead and press back to your downward facing dog. Look to the top of the mat, your choice, either a step or a hop. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, bow. Inhale, rise. Exhale to the heart. Take an inhale through the nose. Exhale, let it go out of your mouth. And do that one more time. 
and then set your hips back. We're coming back into chair pose. Hands reach out, tailbone lengthens. With your next breath in, rise up into marching, lifting your right foot up. Coming back into eagle, cross that leg over. You can have the toe on or off the floor. If you like that ankle wrap, go for it. Left arm on top for your eagle arms, shoulders down, lift your elbows to the height of them. And then exhale, round and curl into that beautiful ball. Unwind your arms, bring them towards the floor. Right leg lifts to the sky, standing splits. And then we'll do those Shiva squats, taking your toe down and then inhaling on the way up. This is number two. We got two more. And then this time, as you lift that leg up and back into your um, Standing splits, we're going to come into warrior three. So a nice little soft bend in that uh, left leg. Inhale, reach up. And then step it back for warrior two. So finding your way into warrior two, our power pose. Let your shoulders relax and find that belly pulling in. Try to find your mula bandha, pulling up your pelvic floor. And then draw those ribs in on your udiana bandha. Reverse triangles next. Front leg straightens, reach back with that left arm and let your right hand slide down your leg. Feel that stretch all the way to your fingertips. Come back up with straight legs. We're turning it into triangle, shifting your hips back. Reach your fingertips forward. Gaze can go either to the floor, the horizon, or way up to the ceiling. Return to your warrior two, bending that front knee, looking up to the top of your mat. Drop your hands to frame that foot, step it back. You know what to do, flow, pause, or rest. We'll meet back in Downward Facing Dog. <clears throat> Move your gaze to the top of the mat, either step or hop. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to lower. Inhale, Utkatasana. Back to chair. Get a little sinky. And then with your next breath in, rise into marching. Left foot lifts up. Cross your leg over, coming into eagle legs, right arm on top for eagle arms. Drop your shoulders down and lift your elbows up. Squeeze and curl into that little ball, lengthening those low back vertebrae and also giving your lymph nodes a little squeeze. Unwind your hand and your legs, send your foot to the sky, take an inhale breath as you exhale four Shiva squats. That's one. Rise back up with your leg in standing splits. Soften your right knee. We're moving into warrior three. Use your core strength. Step it back, Vera two. Dig into the floor with all 10 toes. And then draw your inner thighs to touch, or together, not to touch, but pulling them in towards one another. Reverse triangles next, reaching back. Move it into Trikonasana. Rebend your knee, you're back in two. Take that decision of making it a flow or making it a pause or taking it into child's for a rest. Your choice.
five breaths in that dog. So if it feels like a time to drop down to your knees and find extended child's pose, please do that. You're in child's move back into downward facing dog. Everybody look to the top of the mat and either step or hop. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to lower. Inhale, rise up. Exhale to the heart. Take a moment there to give yourself some gratitude for getting out of the bed and getting on your mat this morning, knowing that your day will be a little bit better. Here we go. Set your hips back. Reach into a chair pose. Arms come up. Rise into marching, right leg lifts. Cross that leg over the left, come into your eagle legs, left arm on top. Inhale, elbows up. Exhale, curl into that beautiful ball. A couple breaths there. And then unwind the arms and the legs, send that foot to the sky, take a breath in, touching down four times, that's one. Last one. Re-extend your foot behind you to make your toes face the earth, even out the pelvis, rising into warrior three. Step it back, warrior two. And then reverse triangle, really lengthening that left side body. Inhale back up, shift your hips, reach forward for half for triangle. You know what's coming next now, huh? <laughs> so here we go, rise back into warrior two. You can choose to stay there or you can turn it into your half moon. Lifting up. And then pivot yourself around so your right hand's on the floor. Step your right foot back. Bring your right hand down, lift your left arm up for a nice twist over to the left. And then take that hand to the earth, step it back, take a flow, a pause, or a rest. You got those five breaths in dog. You're in extended child and would like to rejoin us and press yourself back into dog. Look up at the hands and get your way up there with the step bar. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, lower. Rise to the top and bring your hands to your heart. Recommit to your intention. And then here we go. We're going to sit back for your chair. Arms reach up. With your inhale breath, left leg lifts. As you exhale, cross it over. We're coming into eagle arms with the right on top. Draw your elbows down towards your knees. Release your neck and your spine. And then unwind legs and hands. Send that foot to the sky. Take a breath in for those Shiva squats. Last one. Re-extend your leg back behind you, fire up your belly, rise into warrior three. Step it back to two. And then turn it into your reverse triangle. Moving into trikonasana. We 
three, bend your front knee, you're back in two, same option, stay there or take it into half moon. And then bring your left hand and your left foot to the floor, reach your right arm to the sky, coming into that high lunge twist. Drop that hand down, step that foot back, taking your flow if you like. And then we'll pause for five more breaths. So you get to choose, maybe it's time for child. I was thinking this morning about what led me to be the co-founder of a nonprofit. And I think I have to say it was my mom, not that she was alive at the time because I lost her to cancer and that's pretty much the reason I do what I do. But from the time I was a little girl, she would drag me places doing this and doing that. Not drag me, well, yeah, at that time it was dragging me. She was always cooking meals for people that weren't feeling well. She was going shopping for the underprivileged at Christmas and delivering them to their homes. She just had that giving heart and I think she passed that on to me. And I think that's a good thing. I'm, I'm glad that I have that heart. And you know, my daughter does too. She's a big sister in a program called Girls Rising where she mentors a young gal. And I think that's so sweet. They do something once a month. So it's a trait that can be passed on. All right, when you're ready, press yourself back into downward facing dog. <clears throat> and then inhale your right leg up, exhale knee to nose. Shoot it back behind you, knee to right elbow. Back again and over to the left. And then one more time behind you and bring it through for your pigeon on the right. Take that time to bring in a prop. I like a little blanket or a bolster underneath me. I don't have a bolster with me up here, so I'm taking a blanket. Square your shoulders and your hips, and then lower yourself towards the floor. I like to stack my fists on top of one another like this, but if you feel good all the way down on the mat, you can come down. I, I, it's okay for me, but for whatever reason, I like the stacked fists better. So you ever feels best in your body, which might mean that you're laying on your back right now in refined pigeon. That is perfectly okay too. So Giving Tuesday is specifically this Giving Tuesday now, it normally comes in November after all the Cyber Monday and the you know, Black Friday and all that. But this one is specifically for nonprofits that are having an impact on COVID, those that are um, in the um, category of having a compromised immune system, which is very much what we have with our cancer students. So we've you know, started the online classes through Zoom and we also have downloadable videos because some of our students aren't comfortable on Zoom. So they can go to our website and download it for free. If they wanna make a donation, they can, but they don't have to. And that's what the beauty of what we do is anybody can take it no matter what their financial situation is. And we welcome their caregivers to take classes with them too. And their pets with Zoom. <laughs> Lots of animals are taking yoga classes these days. Let's take about five more patient breaths in and out. And then as you complete that fifth breath, start to bring yourself back into your upward facing pigeon. Walk your hands over to the right, look over your right shoulder, either stay there or bend your leg and reach for your foot with your right hand. Ooh, those hip flexors are tight. No wonder, I feel like all I do is sit all day on the, on the computer screen. Let's take three more breaths here just because we need it.
And then as you release that, tuck those left toes under, shoot your right foot to the sky, shake it out or turn it into a wild thing. And we'll back then into your practice. Ah, looks like a lot of you are taking that option. It's lovely. And then go ahead and flip back over. We'll come back into dog, set that foot down and send your left foot up. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, knee to nose. Inhale it back behind you. Exhale, take it to your left elbow. Bring it back again. And then over to your right. Send it back behind you one more time. And then we'll drop it through for pigeon on the left. Got a full moon coming out in a couple days and this side of your body is the relationship with moon or the, or the moon side of your body, relationship with self, sorry about that, as opposed to the sun side of the right. So this is your more cooler side of the body. It's the more feminine, feeling that feminine energy coming in. Enjoying that gentle stretch in your hip. Very good to release low back tension. A few more patient breaths, you got this. And then go ahead and start to press yourself back up again. We're coming back into upward facing pigeon. Hands are gonna walk over to the left side of the mat. You're gonna look over that shoulder, bend your right knee, reach back for your foot. If you can't grab it, bend your knee anyways, or don't, it doesn't matter. Release the foot from your hand, tuck those left toes under, send that right foot to the sky. If you flipped it, flip it again. If you didn't, do whatever you want to do. <laughs> and then walk yourself to the middle of the mat and have yourself a seat, extending your legs out in front of you, <clears throat> Dandasana. You have a blanket that you like to bring underneath your sits bones, you can do that. And then reach your hands to the sky, take a breath in, and as you exhale, drift forward. Inhale, flat back, exhale, sink a little deeper. Forward folds are such a good way to release that low back stretch, stress. Let your chin, chin tuck to your chest again to help to bring some space into those vertebrae of the neck. And then slide your hands up your legs, grow tall and bring the soles of your feet together. Take your hands and wrap them around your ankles, press your shoulders down and lift your heart up and then come forward for your forward fold in Baddha Konasana. Again, really thinking about dropping those shoulders away from your ears and drawing that chin to your chest. With your inhale breath, bring yourself back up and extend your legs into a V shape. So just a soft V, nothing too major. Elongate your spine once again and then walk your hands forward. I like those little fists stacked again, but if you don't have the space for that, you can do one or two blocks. 
you don't have blocks, you can take your hands almost like seal pose in front of you, allowing your shoulders to again relax if you do that. Do a more passive yin-like pose, so relax your feet. You can even round your spine if you like. Let's take about five more breaths in that forward fold. And then slowly walk yourself back up, find that long spine again. We're gonna take a lateral stretch. If you have a block, bring it to um, near your um, right thigh, either on low or medium. You're gonna bring your right arm onto the block and then stretch over. So if this doesn't feel like much, then take it down a notch. If you don't have a block, you can have your hand on the floor to support you. I want you to go to that place that's just a little bit uncomfortable. Don't go into the full pose because you're gonna hold here for a bit. You can even let that right hand relax so you're not having to stretch, maybe touch your head with your fingers. Draw that shoulder back a little bit. Commit your left hand, not your right hand. I'm feeling a big stretch in my rib cage, in my hip, and in my back. All places that need it. See if you can relax your neck and let your right ear come towards your shoulder, stretching those neck muscles. You've been here for a little while. See if you can go a little bit deeper into the pose. Maybe that forearm drops to the ground next to your leg or the block lowers down a notch. Two more breaths. And then slowly release the arm, the left arm down to your side. Use your right hand to press yourself back up. Come back into that tall spine. Ah, and take your head into an X circle going one way. And then the other. Feels good. Let's try that on the other side. So starting with either the block or whatever you did on the first side, bring your left forearm on top, reach your arm up, and then allow it to relax over. <clears throat> Enjoying that time of being still and quiet. Focusing back on that intention. Then let your feet be relaxed, no flexed feet, just that passive, more yin-like pose. If you wanna go a little deeper, now is your time to do so. And let that left ear drop towards your shoulder. And then slowly bring that hand that's wrapped around your head to your right thigh, press yourself up. Let's nod our head forward and back and you do a little cat-cow action with your back. And then as you come up the next time, go ahead and bring your feet together. We're gonna come onto our back. You want to block handy for your Shavasana, you can do that. If you like your blanket under your head, that's nice too. 
If you have a block, go ahead and bring it. We're going to do some core work with the block, but it's not necessary to have it. If you don't have it, it'll be just fine. So start by taking your feet to the width of the mat and do a little windshield wiper across your low back. And then come back with your heels lined up with your sit bones, have your hands by your side with your palms facing down. However, if you already know that you have some low back issues, I want you to bring your hands underneath your pelvis with your palms facing down. If your back is feeling fine, then your hands will be by your side with your palms facing down. And go ahead and lift your legs up so that your shin bones are parallel to the ceiling, tabletop position. Take an inhale breath and send your feet away from you. You can come as low as to tapping your heels on the floor and then exhale, bring them in. So you take them to where it feels okay in your body. Inhale it back out. If it's hurting your back, then don't go out so far. Exhale back in. Let's do a few more. Good, as your knees come in, hold there. With your next inhale, reach your hands above your head and extend your legs out. So inhale, both arms and legs go out. Exhale, they come back in. A few more just like that. And then if you have a block, it doesn't matter if you don't, it's just another way to make you do five more, bring it on top of your shins. Inhale, send your hands and legs out. Exhale, grab the block with your hands. Inhale, block comes above the head, legs go out. Exhale, stack the block back on your shins. Leave it there as you bring your arms and feet away from one another. Go ahead and grab it this time. Extend back out. Set it back down, reach back out, two more. Last one, I think that was three, I think I cheated you. <laughs> Go ahead and grab the block, bring your feet back to the width of the mat, move that block out of your way. Drop your knees to the right, stack your right foot on top of your left knee and turn your head to the left. You can either extend your arms into a T or bring them into cactus. One more patient breath. And then release that foot from the knee. You're coming back to the width of the mat with your right foot. Both knees are dropping to the left. Left foot's coming on top of that right knee. Turn your head to the right. Bring your head to center, release that foot from your knee. Walk your feet in, give yourself a hug. Rock nicely across that pelvis from left to right. Turn that into your happy baby. Ask yourself if there's anything else you need before Shavasana. If you've got another pose you wanna throw in there, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, find your way into Shavasana. And as you wiggle around and get yourself comfortable, start to focus on your breath again. Find in those patient breaths in and out. And I want you to bring your awareness to your heart center, that place right in the middle of your chest. Place that holds that beautiful energy of the heart chakra. Maybe even imagining the color green. That's the color of the heart chakra. 
So start to bring that color green or any other color. If you like to bring your favorite color in, you can do that as well. Bring it into your heart. Allowing it to turn into that beautiful shade of green. King of love and compassion. And then start to let that beautiful shade of green just flow throughout your body, going into every blood vessel and the bones, every organ, everything. The whole body is radiating in a green color. Maybe it's like that fluorescent green, really bright. And then let that beautiful color start to drift out of your body and expand into the room that you're sitting or laying in, bringing your compassion and love into your space. And then allow it to expand into your whole household, whether it's a one bedroom apartment or a six bedroom, four bath house, but every area of your home be covered in that green, loving, compassionate color. And then let it expand further so you're taking it into your neighborhood, letting it absorb through all of Oceanside, sending love and compassion to our whole neighborhood, the beautiful city of Oceanside. And then let it expand out so that all of San Diego County feels love and compassion for you from you because you're giving, you're giving it to them. And then allow it to be all over the United States. And then all over the planet. And then all over the universe, sending love and compassion to everything you can see. Stay there as long as you like. But if you're ready, Go ahead and add a little wiggle to your fingers and your toes. Stretch your arms above your head, take a nice full breath in and out. And then choose what side you wanna roll onto coming into your fetal position. Bring yourself back up to your comfortable seat. Check back in on that intention and remind yourself the richest people in the world are those who give more than they take. Giving fills your life with things money cannot buy. Gather your hands above your head, find Anjali Mudra and bring it down to your heart. Pausing there to honor yourself on this beautiful Tuesday taking time for yourself before you get outside and enjoy that sunshine. Have a beautiful day, namaste.